after high school, did you did you know then that that's what you want to do, acting? I did. I went to uh, the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York City. But the only thing is, it, oh, was, very, wow. it was very limiting because. I was 19 years old. Yeah. I had no experiences whatsoever. Right. Like I just was a white kid from a very protected, you know, <laughs> under you know, the dome, under the dome, Scarsdale, New York. And, uh, but so you got I, in though. You have to audition. Oh, right? Yeah. You had to audition and I did it. And, and that was all great. But I realized that it wasn't, I hadn't lived. I had no experiences. I had nothing. And so that I went to go visit some friends up at Skidmore college, which was at the time, just had transferred from a girl's school to a, a co-ed school. Nice. So it was 70% girls, 30% guys. Good. It's good and ratio. I went to go, yeah, I went, I went to go <laughs> visit and I ended up staying. Of course. Because I had such a good time. But then I traveled. I went to Australia, New Zealand, Thailand, Nepal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I Wait, went, pump the brakes. How long were you at the performing arts school? Performing arts school for two years. Okay, so it was, it was a good like a chunk of time. Yeah, but a three-year program, and I didn't stick it out the whole thing. Oh, so you didn't get any sort I, of credit or anything? Yeah, I mean, I did it. But you got it experience. Was like, I got the experience, but I realized just what I needed to do. Yeah. And then... And you were you performing there, or were you just basically taking classes? Well, no, you were performing, taking classes, doing all the, you know, whatever their curriculum was. Oh, know? that's great, That's though. all the, you know, you were... It's a conservatory, so you're right. doing everything. You're right. taking dance, you're taking singing, you're taking voice, you're taking That's that fantastic. Oh, it was. Right? It was great. But at 19, though, I didn't know anything. I didn't right. know You any- wanted to drink I booze to, and go want- to frat parties. Exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> so I went and did that. And then when I went and traveled, then I traveled for a year by myself. After you graduated Skidmore or mid From Skidmore? Skidmore? Mid Skidmore. And then, like, somebody was uh, at the Ratskeller or whatever, you know, the, like the student union. And they had this thing. They had a letter from somebody that was on a sheep station in Australia. And I was like, that's what I'm going to go do. Oh, man, this is amazing. And honestly, there was a period there, I would say most of the 80s, I did absolutely (laughs) everything that I wanted to do. Like, I just kept following whatever I wanted to do. And then I got to Australia, and I was traveling around, and I was having a great time. And I saw this movie, Birdie, which was like, uh, I think it was... um, Matthew Modine and um, what's his name? Ah, well, I can't think of his name now. Anyway, but um, it was so it, 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 I just loved it, and they right. were my age, and I, all of a sudden I was like, oh. That's what I should be doing. Yeah. And so, like, it was really bad because it was the very beginning of my trip. And all I thought about was, like, <laughs> I got to go back and I got to go do that. I got to go work on that. I got to do that. That's what I so, really want to so do. So when you were traveling, what was your plan? Just to see sights? Just to see the world, see basically? The world. You and weren't experience and just, just travel. And you had the, the means to do that? The reason I had the means is a couple years earlier, I had my jaw broken by my dentist taking out my wisdom teeth. And I wouldn't have been a big what? deal, except for that he like he snapped. He was taking it out, and it broke like a branch. Ah! And and I did ugh. that, and I was like, "Wait, what was that?" And he was like, "Don't be such a baby. It's not that big a deal. It's not a problem. Whatever. I'm going to suture it up." He sutured it up because it was bleeding. I got home. It was hemorrhaging. I had to go to the hospital. I mean. You could have found it a number of different times. I went to see him like two weeks later, and he was like, oh, you're, you pulled out all the stitches. It was broken. Yeah. I went to another dentist. He looked at me, and he was like, well, that's probably fractured. Oh. And this guy had like the big, you know, like x-ray machine, and then the other guy had like the like snow cone machine. Yeah. He, he, it was like obviously broken. So anyway, so. You got to settle this. So I got a little <laughs> that, which, you know, was great. That's because, fantastic. And so it was great, too, because I was in youth hostels and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I basically just like... You went by yourself, presumably. I, all by myself. That's great. Originally, I was going with like 14 guys. <laughs> then I was going with like three or four guys. Then I was going with Pete Mad Dog Madden, who was definitely going. And then, he, not always then he didn't happens. go. Yeah. <laughs> but then I just went. That's good for you. Did oh, you see anything sure. amazing? Anything oh, life-changing other than Birdie? everything. Yeah. Everything. Just, um, you know, I had always wanted to go to Nepal. Because you remember Indiana Jones or like uh, Temple, not whatever it is. Um, Chris, uh, what's the first one? Uh, See, that's a beer. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark. There's that red line from him going from India to Nepal. Okay. And I remember seeing that on screen and be like, I want that. To do, I want to do that. The, the screen has had so much influence on oh, your life. Oh, it is. Absolutely. It, I it's love a wonderful it. life. It's yeah. Like, I I always remember him saying, like, the three greatest sounds are bell, uh, train whistles, car horns. Oh, whatever. yeah. Uh, what there, movie's that? Uh, it's a Wonderful Life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy Stewart. Yeah. And, uh, That's a great line. I, but there's so, oh, you watch that movie. There's, there's one after another. Oh, yeah. I watch it every year. And I, so do I. 
It's like I, think I own my, it on DVD. It's one of my, it's my, one of my favorite. I just like watch the message, Christmas. not only just as a Christmas movie, but I just like the message of like everybody's life touches so many lives. Absolutely, and you just don't you just don't realize it. Plus, also, Bedford Falls is very Scarsgard. Oh, feel. for sure, <laughs> <laughs> Scarsdale or whatever. Scarsdale is. It is, but, but uh, you love Nepal. Nepal was pretty crazy. Oh, I loved it. It was like walking around in a National Geographic. Yeah, it was just so cool, and everybody was like smoking little hash pipes with the. <laughs> oh, it was so cool. And this is pre cell phone, so you're literally out there by yourself. Were oh, you were you I, at all like, nervous? It was like being dead. It was totally like being dead because all my friends, their lives were continuing on. <laughs> <laughs> and all their lives and the parties and things at Skidmore were all just continuing on. Yeah. And I was gone. I was completely gone. And I didn't talk to anybody because there was no way anybody could. Ma- I would call my mom like every couple of weeks just to let her know I was yeah. alive. I couldn't imagine that. My son being on the other right. side of the world. But it was so much fun. And it just changed who I was. Let me say, I, I, I've always wanted to travel, but I felt like I've never had the ability to. And you, you know, James Grace, he was in LA and up and moved to Hawaii. And I was like, that is crazy. I would never even think to do that because I'd want to get comfortable and stuff before I did that. And same with this is no, situation with Nepal. Get... It's amazing. I admire both of you for doing that. But you, you're, you're, you're looking at it backwards. Once you get comfortable, you ain't going anywhere. <laughs> you're comfortable. You go when you don't have any plans. <laughs> well, I think once you get some money and you are allowed nah, to do that. Then you're chasing the money forever. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I'll ne- I would never have been able to do that now. I would never, I would never have been able to do that. But it was so great, though. Th- I was going anyway, and then the money came through. Yeah. I was just going to do it. I was oh, actually going to go work up in Alaska on a Jeez. fishing boat. Yeah, you know what, though? You're young. <laughs> go do this I'm not stuff. young. I just turned 30. I'm, a, I'm an old man now. <laughs> do it, because you know what? You're, it's just never going to... There's never going to be a perfect time. Yeah. Like, there's never going to be a perfect time to have a kid. Yeah. There's never going to be a perfect time to get married. Yeah. All these things are like, uh, I don't know. But you know what? You got to just go for Jump it. Jump off that cliff. Absolutely. Jump into that pool naked. You just got to take the plunge. Absolutely. How long were you traveling then for? Uh, for 11 months. Oh, that's a healthy is length of time. It was a long time. I was time. picturing like two or three months. No, no. I was in for the long haul. That's fantastic. And I also really wanted to see a lot of different things. And and it was all like the, the southern, southeastern hemisphere or whatever. all back side of the world. Yeah. Back the opposite side of the world. Back down there. And I knew I'd never get back there probably for years and years. I knew I'd see Europe probably if I right. wanted to go. I could probably go there. But I just wanted to do it, and I wanted an, an adventure. I wanted to be Indiana Jones a little bit. Yeah. Another movie that I just like. And you I did just, it. I, yeah, you know what, though? You got to do those things because <laughs> they shape who you are. And of then, course. And then when you start, like, well, you did the same thing. You left uh, wherever, Minnesota, Minnesota and yeah. you came out here. Yeah. I mean, th- that's... Same on a smaller thing. scale, but yes, yeah, totally. Nah, not really. <laughs> because you, you're taking a big chance. Absolutely, that's you true. You were doing a totally different thing. Yeah. Weren't you? You were doing like... I was your, a civil engineer, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a totally different thing. <laughs> this is crazy, but you got to do it because it shapes who you are. Totally.